My name is Jenny Bukos. I'm a filmmaker, I'm a traveler, and I believe that global citizenship is a critical 21st century skill. Yet the topic of global understanding is nearly absent from the national dialogue on education. Now I've spent the last 10 years of my life learning what I believe keeps people from engaging in thoughtful global dialogue, and I've seen the mistakes we make on a global scale when we fail to engage across cultures. I didn't always believe this, however. I grew up here. Sleepy little town in upstate New York, about four hours outside of New York City. At the time of my childhood, this town had a population of about 800 people, of which 98% were white. Now, this was the kind of place where you more or less knew everyone in town and all of your neighbors. At the time, most of the uh, television news and newspapers tended to focus on things that happened within a 50-mile radius of our community. I can only recall a few international stories that received significant media attention. Growing up, I hadn't experienced much of the world. Traveling abroad wasn't something that I had aspired to do, nor was it something that had been encouraged while I was in school. Nevertheless, in the year 2000, I applied for my first passport. My first trips out of the country were for work, and these were very compartmentalized experiences. I would travel abroad, have an experience, and then come back to my life in New York City without understanding anything what it was like to be, a place, be from a place other than my own. Now, I visited about half a dozen countries in my first three years of travel, and every experience was pretty much the same. Then, in 2004, I saw a South African play called Nothing But the Truth. This was right around the same time as I started a production company, Project Explorer, to create globally focused educational films. When I walked into the theater, I knew almost nothing about the history of South Africa. I knew nothing about apartheid, and I knew absolutely nothing about truth and reconciliation. During this play, I was confronted with an entirely new history. How could something as monumental as South Africa's first free elections have gone on when I was in university, and yet I knew nothing about it? The beauty of theater in general, and this play in particular, is the ability to open your mind and touch your heart through storytelling. This play lit a spark. I walked out of the theater with my next educational series decided on. I would go to South Africa. As I got closer to film production, I was worried that people wouldn't be open to discussing their country with me because I didn't, I didn't have an in-depth understanding of their history or their everyday concerns. But in South Africa, people were surprisingly open and eager to share their stories. People welcomed me into their homes and into their businesses. And I heard stories from some of the most fascinating people on the planet. This had never happened to me as a tourist. And it was through these stories that I started to see what it means for South Africans to live there, what consumes their day to day, and the challenges they face. And I began to focus less on our differences and more of what we share as human beings. But the most enlightening experience was when I visited two schools. I found that adults are, afraid, are often afraid of looking foolish or uninformed. Kids outside the academic setting of the classroom don't have that filter and will ask anything on their minds. And just as many Americans have a preconceived notion of a poverty-stricken and war-torn African continent, these students viewed America through the lens of limited news programming, Hollywood blockbusters, and pop culture. They asked me things like, how much bling do you have? What kind of car do you drive? Well, I'm a New Yorker, so I, I take the subway. And do you know Beyonce and Jay-Z? No. And suddenly, I was representing the United States in a way I had never anticipated. I was helping to break preconceived notions and show how Americans are just as diverse and unique as these students in South Africa were. So I took a cue from these young kids and started to ask all kinds of questions of the people I met, and in doing so, started to engage in dialogue on big topics. Everyone always tells you, don't talk about politics or religion, it's too polarizing. But I found the opposite. When I was abroad, as long as it came from a point of learning, almost no topic was off limits. And because I was open to having these conversations, I was able to show an authentic reflection of life in South Africa in my film series. Rather than making films about what I thought was important, I just asked people simple questions. What are the biggest challenges you face? 
what do you want the rest of the world to know about you and your country? And the answers to these questions help me see that most of our concerns are, in fact, global in nature. And what happens far away affects us directly in an economical, political, and very personal way. So last year, I had the chance to film in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, in a hospital. And this is where the critical importance of global citizenship, global understanding as a skill, really hit home for me. Following the 2010 earthquake, some surgeons were estimating nearly 200,000 Haitians would need an amputation. And in Haiti, losing a limb carries a social stigma. International aid organizations quickly sent donated prosthetics, and some of the first to arrive were in skin tones matching that of white people. I asked my white friends to consider the nearly unimaginable trauma of losing a limb in a society that doesn't view an amputee as a whole person. Now, as a white person, imagine being outfitted with a black skin tone hand or foot. This is what can happen when we impose our viewpoints. This example is not unique to Haiti. We can all think of international um, humanitarian, humanitarian campaigns or foreign actions that have failed for the similar reasons of not engaging across cultures. Solutions to our toughest challenges must be developed together and not imposed. Now, having traveled to nearly 50 countries and having worked with hundreds of people around the world, it is my belief we need to, we need to ask more questions. We need to listen. And we, need, we especially need more cross-cultural conversation. And this conversation has to begin in the classroom. Project Explore, my film company, was one of the first tools to encourage a dialogue across cultures for young people on a global scale. And I've watched one of our three-minute videos lead to an hour's worth of questioning, pulling in students um, into a conversation who typically sit quiet in the back of class. To me, this is the foundation of global citizenship asking questions, sharing stories, and listening, really listening. Inquisitive dialogue is a skill every child is born with. Young children are constantly asking questions to better, to better understand their world. But soon after they reach school, these big questions often stop when they learn the value placed on a right answer. To me, being a global citizen means celebrating our common humanity while respecting the different path another culture or group may take. And you can't really do either of those things if you don't take the time to learn what those differences are. My work and the global education work as a whole has drawn some criticism from those who feel global education is anti-American. Some even fight against the idea of being global citizens, claiming they are only citizens of the government under which they live. Now, in a very narrow way, this is true. We don't all get passports from the United Nations. But unlike being a citizen of a nation, being a global citizen gives us all the same rights and obligations at birth. You can't opt out of humanity. So why are we, as a nation, choosing to ignore the vital importance of global citizenship in one's education? What does it mean to me to be a good global citizen? Uh, I would say for myself, it's challenging myself to be aware of what's going on outside of my normal boundaries. You know, uh, to be aware of what's happening with my neighbor. And not necessarily my neighbor who lives next to me in California, but my neighbor in terms of neighbors in other states, neighbors in other countries, uh, neighbors in other continents. Just keep, to, to, just trying to every day be aware of something that's going on outside of my normal way of life. I think uh, being a good global citizen um, means waking up to the fact that we are all part of a much larger process, an evolving process, and that those of us that are privileged enough even to be having this conversation or watching this now are actually in a position to move that process forward. And a big part of that is actually realizing the fact that we are interconnected. The world is getting flatter and smaller every single day and we have much more in common with people living in a tiny little village in northern China than either they real realize or we realize. A lot of issues that we're all dealing with today in America are global issues um, and we're all connected with the internet, with Facebook, with everything. I think it's very important today with the information that we can have about what's going on in the world 
to be active to make our world a better world. Communicate. Ask questions. Who are you? Where are you from? What do you value? What do you think we could do better? And answer those same questions to yourself and to the people that you meet. Communicate, listen, answer the questions, keep asking, keep answering, communicate. One of the most important tasks of an educator or a parent is to foster the next generation of global citizens. A generation that is better prepared to communicate in our rapidly shrinking world. The world cannot afford to wait. We know our world is becoming more globally connected and technology is erasing geographical borders. We need those who will encourage curiosity. We need those who will challenge prejudices and be open to provocative questions. Young people need this because global awareness is a critical 21st century skill that every student will need in order to succeed. And without us, they're unlikely to learn it anywhere else.